In Rise of Kingdoms, to win a KVK, you need to be able to rally, garrison, and have the open field. And the last thing for me to discuss is how to garrison properly as of 2023. So today, I'll be talking all about garrison. I will give you the best tips and tricks I can possibly give you. I will tell you what you need to actually become a garrison leader. I'll give you the top garrison pairs. And I'll also discuss some of the very fundamental basics of being a proper garrison player. So if you are interested in doing a garrison or you are a garrison leader and you just want to hopefully improve your trades, you definitely need to check out today's video. Let's start off with what does it mean to be a garrison? And it's, it's quite simple what I would qualify as a garrison. When you lead a building, as in defending a building, whether it be a flag, alliance fortress, your own city, a pass, and holy site, anything where you are leading a garrison, so you are protecting that building with one march and everyone else is filling it, that makes you a garrison in my opinion. And if you're in an alliance flag and your troop is the leading troop and you're taking a rally, you are the garrison of that flag. So that is the simple definition of what a garrison is. You are defending a type of structure. As a garrison leader, you have to really think, does your account suit the role? And here's what I'd say for your account to be a really good garrison leader. There are two routes you could go. Really high spender who spends a lot on crystal tech. So you're probably maxing your crystal tech each KVK. You're going as far in as you can. You're going all in on your garrison. Everything you get goes towards being a garrison leader. That is the real mega whale. They pretty much just buy whatever garrison is meta when they release. Like ditto releases, they're just going to max her and put her in a garrison because they know she's the meta. So a garrison leader either has to be a really big spender or they have to be some type of a really niche account where all they invest in is just garrison commanders. They try and make their equipment as good as they can for a garrison. So if you want to be a garrison leader as a free-to-play, it's going to be really difficult. I rarely see a free-to-play garrison perform that well, especially against a KVK where there's a lot of pay-to-wins. Like, you're going to see a garrison, maybe with equipment like mine, that's like a free-to-play garrison. A real proper garrison is going to have this whole set, special talented. They got like top-tier armaments and formations. So if you want to be a garrison as a free-to-play player, it's actually really difficult and it's much harder than a rally because with garrison commanders, often they have no field value. If you look at most garrison commanders, for example, Queen Ditto sucks on the field. Heroclea sucks on the field. Yanziska sucks on the field. Flavia sucks on the field. All these commanders I'm mentioning, which are garrison commanders, are horrible on the field. They just never, ever perform well because garrison commanders, besides like real few exceptions where like a monitor was okay with Artemisia, they suck on the field. I don't think there's a single garrison commander in the open field meta right now. And there's a ton of rally commanders in open field meta. Like Terek is an open field meta. Bertrand is actually usable in the open field. Henry is an open field meta. So the thing with garrison is you're making investments in commanders that are only using garrison. If you're garrisoning, they're staying in that garrison and they're not going anywhere. Also, just like rally commanders, garrison commanders get replaced really quickly. But unlike rallies, they can't be used on the field. So once a garrison's replaced, they're done for. Yes, some garrisons will last longer. For example, Zenobia lasted like three years. But that was some real good luck, especially since Lilith kind of stopped releasing garrisons. They took like a bit of a hiatus. They released a bunch of rallies and then they released some trash commanders and then they went back to a few garrisons and then they stopped again. Then they released Flavius and Flavius still worked with Zeno. So, so in real rare situations, you see some really old garrisons still being usable. But by now, a lot of the older garrisons are useless. Like Zeno sucks as a garrison nowadays. Compared to the other options, she's almost out of the meta, she's only barely usable with Flavius. Someone like, for example, YSS is also almost out of the meta completely. He used to be the top garrison, and now he's pretty much just, I guess, like a possible garrison with Heraclius. So you can see just straight off the bat right there, a lot of garrisons get replaced easily, and all of them can't be used on the field. Like, at least you invest in a Henry for a rally, and he gets replaced, which is eventually going to happen. You know you can use him on the field, and he's going to perform fine. Like, he's not going to be amazing, but he's not going to be trash. You know he's going to do well. That's the thing with Garrison. You are risking pretty much all your gold sculptures on a commander that's going to be useless in probably a year or two years. Then also with Garrison, you're going to take a lot more deads. I often find that a Garrison leader takes way more deads than a Rally leader since a Garrison leader can fill a flag with five marches. Like you can see a Garrison leader who's properly trying to keep that Garrison alive pretty much going to be spam filling it. And when you're doing that, you're going to notice that you're losing a lot of troops. Often even Rally leaders lose a lot of troops. But if you're a Garrison leader, you're probably up there with some of the most troops killed in your kingdom because there's just not as many people who are willing to do a garrison. If you want to be the garrison leader, you're going to have to fill that flag up. You're going to have to keep and keep and keep on filling it until it pretty much either wins the garrison or it dies. And even if you have people filling the flag, you are still in charge of trying to keep your march alive in the garrison at all times. Unlike a rally lead where the march can technically die but still lead the rally, 
If your March dies in the garrison, you got to put another one in. So in a longer rally situation, you're taking more deads than a rally leader would. The rally leader is going to lose like what? Max 50k troops. You will lose up to 300,000 troops in a really, really long rally, especially if you're a garrison leader, because you have to be in that flag. You have to be reinforcing it. Otherwise, it's just going to die. Like a rally leader can even rally with just one troop, just one troop, and it will count as a rally. But if you want a garrison, there's no garrisoning with one troop because it's going to die instantly. So you can see right there as a garrison leader, you are going to expect to take a lot more deads than a rally leader. And that's another reason why it's very not free to play friendly, in my opinion. So let's move on to some equipment stuff for garrisons. And that will lead me on to the tips for garrisons. First of all, Ring of Doom is almost a must. If you were getting swarmed, Ring of Doom is going to be really, 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 really good. Because you're going to pretty much have that all damage buff up for a very, very long time. Like that's going to be a nice buff that's almost triggering very consistently, especially if you're being swarmed. Then Scholar's Lucky Coin. Usually people would say this is rubbish, but for a garrison, this is actually a fairly good accessory just because the shielding is very nice. The other reason the Scholar's Lucky Coin is really good is because if you have a garrison that's not shielding very much and you want to run the hollow square formation, which is the apparently the best formation possible for garrisoning, you're going to notice that a lot of the skills require you to activate some form of a shield because it's just, it's just how it is. So what happens is if you have a Scholar's Lucky Coin and your commander doesn't shield, for example, let's say for some reason you're running a Queen Ditto with an Amana Tari. Not an amazing garrison, but let's say you're doing it. doesn't usually have a shield, but you may have some of the uniquely inscribed armaments for the hollow square formation. And to benefit from that, you need to have a shield. But the only way you can get a shield is with a Scholar's Lucky Coin. So there's where it becomes really good. So it used to be a good accessory, but now it's extremely good, especially if you are going all in on that hollow square formation, trying to get those really good inscriptions. That also brings me on to my next tip for garrison. You really have to focus down on your garrison. Pick your troop type that you want to garrison and just focus down on that troop. Just pretty much make the best march you possibly can. If you want to be a real garrison leader, you want to be as powerful as you can and you're not a whale, there's pretty much no open field for you. All you can do is unlock a garrison commander expertise from the day they release pretty much and then put the best equipment and the best armaments and the best formations that you own on them. You focus on that one troop as a free-to-play and you just hammer in on that troop getting as much equipment, as high a level as you can for one march. Like if you want to be a real garrison leader and you don't want open field pretty much at all, you're going to, instead of unlocking another set of gear on another commander, just try and refine the crap out of all the gear you own. Even 1% of stats is going to make a, a substantial difference in a garrison and even in a rally. So if you want a garrison, you really have to hammer down on your equipment and try and get it as powerful as you possibly can for just one march. Because with that one march, you're going to be trying to garrison a flag which is extremely important. I then recommend really trying to train whichever troop you garrison the most. So if you know you're going to be, for example, an infantry garrison, you're just going to garrison a ton of infantry, you're using speed ups on anything, it's got to be those infantry troops. Because if you run out of troops, you're screwed. As a garrison leader, like I said, there's no launching a rally with one troop. There's only filling the flag up with 400,000. So you have to make sure that you have enough troops in stock to be a proper garrison. Otherwise, you're going to notice that you're just basically useless. Because once you run out of infantry, you can't do much on the open field since you really hammered down on that troop. So what you got to do is just train whichever troop you garrison the most. If you garrison only infantry, you train for pre-KVK like a million infantry units. You don't train anything else. Where before you might as well train like 200,000 of each. Maybe you trained your main troops up a little bit more. For this, you only train the one troop. So definitely something to keep in mind. You are really stuck training the one troop that you own because if you don't, you're not going to have enough troops to garrison, especially as a low spender or a free-to-play. If you're a whale though, you can obviously spend a little bit more going in and getting other troops because you'll probably garrison with other troops. You'll be able to open field. But for a free-to-play, you're going to have to just train that one troop and only that troop. Next, the real simple tip is just make sure that whenever you have a garrison inside of a flag, you make sure that everyone knows which troop is in that flag. Often, if people don't have a marker on top, they will just fill the flag with anything. So what you have to make sure you do is, A, if you're a garrison, you can change the recommended troop type here, which is someone goes to put troops in the flag, it will automatically put that troop in. So if you see I put it to archers, and I go new troops, it's going to automatically select archers. If I set this to infantry, for example, and I go to put new troops, you're going to notice that it's automatically going to select infantry. So make sure that your recommendations are correct, and you probably want a marker on top. Also, I just recommend trying to get your city as close to a flag as possible, because if you're a garrison, even this small little distance right here can make the difference between a win and a lose, because the second a garrison on a flag goes down, and the garrison commander is actually dead, you don't have another garrison in there ASAP, that flag is going to take such a horrible trade and it's going to die so quickly, it's ridiculous. So make sure, especially as a garrison leader, you coordinate with your members in your alliance that you get next to the flag. Because otherwise, 
you're going to pretty much be screwed with a very, very hefty bill for everyone to pay if the garrison does die, which often the garrison commander in a long battle will die. So you have to be close by to reinforce it, or you have to have someone else on standby to reinforce the garrison. I'd also recommend switching your garrison around for whales, especially to whichever building you're reinforcing, whether it be an alliance flag, a pass, especially, or even one of these holy sites here. Usually the pass, you're going to run different commanders, and I'll talk a little bit about that. And for Alliance flags, you're going to run other commanders. And I will talk about that now when I discuss commanders. So we'll go over the top five or so garrison commander pairings, in my opinion. And I'll discuss first the top one for each troop type. For infantry garrison, the current best garrison in the game. If I'm saying pure infantry and no using Heraclius, it's going to be Flavius plus Zeno. It's going to be the pretty much only garrison you would run. It's really, really strong. For a pass, you can actually run... Scipio Africanus with Flavius, that's actually an okay combination because it can't be swarmed down. And Scipio's AoE is still really, really good. Also with Xeno, you can also run her with a Scipio on a pass, but this is going to be a much more nuanced garrison. It's not going to perform that well, though Scipio with Flavius on a pass is really, really nice. Then for cavalry, the current best cavalry garrison is probably Jadwiga with Jan Ziska because well, it's the two best cavalry garrisons at the moment. Yanziska is actually a really, really good garrison, in my opinion. I think he does hold a lot of value. I think he will be one of the commanders that does really hold his value in the future. You're going to see him used for probably a few years. And then for the archer garrison, the current best archer garrison definitely has to go to Zulang with Queen Ditto. Zulang, crazy AoE, crazy stats. Queen Ditto, the current best garrison in the game. That does bring me on to the overall rankings. And coming in at rank 5, I'd have to give it to two leadership commanders. That being... Heraclius, who you're going to see on this list a lot, plus YSS, because YSS is just such a good commander. Like, honestly, you look at YSS with Heraclius, and they work so well because YSS doesn't need a specific troop, and nor does Heraclius. So if you're in a situation where your kingdom's low on troops and so is the enemy kingdom, just garrison Heraclius with YSS. Yeah, you're not going to trade that amazing against the rally, but at least you can put something in the flag. And YSS does give a nice amount of AoE. He has a nice amount of defense and damage. Yeah, his stats are a little bit outdated, like they're not that amazing, but they do hold up still nowadays, especially when you pair him with Heraclius, who is definitely one of the newer meta garrisons. Coming in at rank four, we have Heraclius plus Flavius. Flavius is probably the weakest of the current meta garrisons in comparison to like Yanziska and Queen Dido, especially when paired with Heraclius. He definitely works. Like, don't get me wrong, you're still going to expect the trade quite well with the Flavius, he just doesn't work as good as some of the other current meta garrisons. And his pairing with Xeno is obviously not as good as the current meta since she's not even on this list. Coming in at rank 3, this is another archer garrison. This is Zulang plus Queen Ditto. Queen Ditto being the primary here. Queen Ditto, the new meta garrison, she is performing the best currently since the infantry rallies can't stop her. The cav rallies are currently too weak and she is brand new. So putting her with the newest, most overpowered commander in the game being Zulang, who has a crazy AoE and fairly good stats and double AoE basically, is going to melt. Obviously, they will melt as well if they get swarmed. So if you get a Queen Ditto and a Zulang in a garrison, you want to try and control field or at least have some sort of a field presence to the point where your flag is not going to get 10, 20 swarmed. So make sure you do have some form of field presence around that flag to ensure that it doesn't die instantly. But if you do, it's going to get a ton of AoE kills. It's going to do a ton of damage. It's going to be able to hold off most rallies, and it's going to trade quite well. Coming in at rank 2, we have our first and last cavalry garrison. This is a Jan Ziska with a Heraclius. Once again, Heraclius is back, and Heraclius is just performing really well. He works with pretty much every single commander and replaces their old pairings. Like before, Jan Ziska plus Jadwiga would be the best cav garrison, but now I would argue that Heraclius is slightly better. Like, he's not that much better, but he is still technically better. So if you are running a cav garrison... Yanziska plus Heraclius is going to do really well. Yanziska plus Jadwiga obviously still works. It's still going to be really good. And if I were making like a top 10, she would definitely be on there, probably at around rank 6. So keep that in mind. Jadwiga definitely still performs quite well with Yanziska. Just Heraclius is currently dominating the meta. And that also does bring me on to rank 1. Our current meta domination, which hopefully changes soon if new Cav rallies do release, is Queen Ditto plus Heraclius. We're going to be looking at Two really, really strong commanders there. Heraclius being a very generic and the second newest garrison, plus Queen Ditto, a very specific archer garrison who doesn't really require a specific archer secondary. She works amazing with Heraclius. It is the current meta garrison. It is performing the best out of all the garrisons I've seen. Just because the Cav Rally meta, yeah, it's really good for cities. It's just a little bit behind on garrisons. Like Nevsky with Joan works on a garrison. It's not that amazing. Nevsky with Minna works on a garrison. It's not that amazing, so keep that in mind. It's going to be able to pretty much counter 
every single rally you send its way. And it's fairly anti-swarm because Heraclius is super tanky with all of his shielding and his own 5 target AoE. And also, Queen Ditto makes herself even more anti-swarm by pretty much debuffing anyone who tries to swarm her. So that is quite a good garrison overall. So that is our current rank 1 garrison as of 2023. I do expect this to change if new commanders release, especially when new garrison commanders do come out. Garrisoning a pass is the only other time the commanders really change, and this is because with a pass, only 4 or 3 people can hit it at the max, and the rest of the people will just walk side by side. So often passes, since no one can go around and get field control, since it can't be swarmed down, take a long, long time to kill, and that changes up the garrison meta. First of all, I'd highly recommend having some type of an AoE in a pass. If you are running a pass garrison, AoE is going to be your best friend, since basically, you'll be able to wipe out anyone that comes too close to the pass. And I mean wipe out. I've seen pass reports where some unsuspecting person maybe crashes when they're about to enter a pass, or they stand right next to the pass and they don't notice. They take hundreds of thousands of dead troops. I've personally taken... 50,000 dead troops because I wasn't paying attention and I walked into a pass AoE. It does crazy amounts of damage since in KVK a pass can have 3 million troops I'm pretty sure. That means you're going to notice AoE is going to be your favorite thing in a pass garrison especially when the rallies take way longer. This means that a YSS is a really good commander plus it means you don't have to focus on which troops go in the pass making a 12 hour pass rally much easier to defend than only using infantry or only using archers or only using cavs. So YSS with Heraclius, amazing. Zenobia performs quite well with YSS in this, especially since she can't be swarmed down. That means she's just going to keep healing. YSS is going to be dealing out the crazy AoE he normally does. And that's going to be a fairly decent pass garrison if you don't have a Heraclius. Though I still think Heraclius plus YSS is way better. Also, another commander pairing that used to work, but not as much now. Like I said before, is Flavius with Scipio. It works. Just because with passes, it can't be swarmed down. And Scipio's AoE is nutty good. Also, another option is Queen Ditto with Zhu Lang. And since it can't be swarmed down, Zhu Lang's AoE is going to make a lot of work onto anyone who comes near the pass. 2,000 damage to 5 people. Queen Ditto with Zhu Lang is going to completely melt like just anyone who gets near. So that is another great option. Much better in a pass than in a flag because it can't be swarmed. And then finally, Heraclius with Theodora, another commander who has crazy AoE. Also can work in a pass, especially if their rallies are not that good. If you notice they're not amazing and you're already dealing a ton of AoE damage, you have a Theodora. She may work quite well on a pass and could actually bring your trades up ever slightly. Now, this is definitely the worst of the options, but I mean, the damage they're going to be dealing is fairly decent. I've even seen a few Theodora garrisons deal okay damage. I mean, she is probably the worst of the extra options that I've just given you, but she is still an option. Now, overall, being a garrison can be very difficult, especially for you to play and Commanders are really the main reason. They're hard to invest in, they don't have any value on the open field, and you need to be taking a ton of dead troops to keep your commanders in the flag. So being in garrison as a free-to-play is definitely the most difficult thing anyone can do, and I salute you if you want to do it. Now, I just want to say, towards the end of this video, I've taken like 50 takes of some parts, and all you need to do to show me some gratitude and appreciation is hit the like button. YouTube loves it when people hit likes, and I really, really appreciate it when you do hit the like button. Now, I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.